And maybe just uh, while we're waiting to get started, um, I'll paste a link in the chat for everybody. Um, just a second version of the PID policy um, has been released just recently. Um, and I think, Brian, you'll probably talk through some of those policy updates and um, you know, some of the feedback we got touched on the implementation side. So that's why we'll pick up on that today as well. Um, okay, yes, I actually don't do much of that. <laughs> but <laughs> okay. uh, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, it's a very brief summary. Yeah, well, and Sarah, you were allowed for a small commercial. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, uh, well, I think by, by that time, now that we've gone through uh, various sessions uh, on top of the plenary, it, it, it's clear that we have a, now a corpus of uh, documents that are either on their way or in draft version or uh, and so on. And it's normal at this moment since uh, our goal is to be ready by the end of the year. So uh, we, we have this, uh, this consultation day today in the course uh, of the work. And uh, so that's why we have documents at various uh, stages and it is by design, so to speak, right? For some of them, we're really looking, uh, that's why the, the title of the event is consultation. Uh, we're, we're really looking forward to feedback. So the, for the PID policy, it's been available a few days ago. Uh, this morning for the, the EOSC interoperability framework, it was yesterday uh, on, on AI. Similarly, I mean, documents are coming up uh, in the coming uh, weeks and on and on and on so um that's uh that's the status we're in i think the the event today is illustrating the current state of affairs and also looking forward for feedback uh that's why we call the event consultation right i mean uh feedback either during the call today or uh you know uh, commenting on those documents that are available uh, on the web. Okay, with that as an intro, and thanks, Sarah, for the, you know, the the, the opportunity to to, to share uh, the 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 pit policy version two. Uh, so this session is on, uh, as the title says, on persistent identifiers. Uh, the, uh, Brian will provide an introduction, and then uh, Raphael will uh, highlight. Uh, the work uh, that is going on in the architecture working group, while the PIT policy is a joint effort between uh, uh, between uh, the fair working group and the architecture working group. But that's the mechanics anyway. Uh, so we will get uh, into, um, with Raphael, into the technical architecture for persistent identifier in the second part of this uh, of this presentation. So with that, uh, I will hand over to Brian, who will introduce uh, the whole session. Brian? Yes, hello, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for coming back. Um, so I'm going to give uh, a very brief uh, overview uh, uh, of the current work on position identifier policy. Um, uh, a lot of this was said in the session this morning, so I don't want to repeat that. Um, uh, but for some of you who weren't at that session, we felt it would be worth just spending a few minutes and saying what we're doing here and what the status is. And then we'll hand over to Raphael for looking at the uh, more, more implementation issues. So uh, this is the... So, right. So, uh, so what I'm going to look at is very briefly um, look at the purpose of the PID policy, what is it for, who's been created for, what have we been doing, uh, a little bit about some of the principles, uh, not so much about the scope, but some of the principles of, of the policy and what, and what we're trying to achieve, what we're trying to cover, and then where we are, what the next steps are, and how people might uh, get involved with consultation. So. Who's involved? Well, this has been a joint uh, activity between two working groups. Uh, firstly, the, the FAIR working group led by Sarah Jones, uh, which has been uh, mostly been done by Peter Wittenberg, Rachel Kutarski, Anders Conrad, and Andre uh, Hugerbart, uh, but also the, um, the architecture working group led by Jean-Francois uh, has been heavily involved. And here, 
we've well, it's been quite a large group of people but uh, involved in this but mostly uh, myself Paolo Mangi, Raphael Ritz, Tobias Weigel, uh, Weigel and uh, um, more recently uh, Maggie Hellstrom and Mario Valle got very heavily involved so so um, uh, uh, a joint piece of work between the two groups. I think that's worked, that's, that seems to have worked quite well. I think we've been quite collaborative. Um, so uh, just to go over some of the purposes of what we're trying to do this for. Uh, so this is about uh, for decision makers uh, within uh, providers of, of uh, EOS services and providers of EOS infrastructure to uh, guide how they should deliver those those services and it defines uh, a set of expectations um, of how persistent identifiers um, should be used uh, to support uh, an environment um, for fair research in European Open Science Cloud uh, and as such it sets some basic requirements of what providers should provide what position identifiers properties of these buyers should should um, uh, we should expect them to have and the basic services offer so we can have a trusted environment a trusted infrastructure uh, available to support resistant identifiers or or should I say a set a, a infrastructures for position identifiers we don't necessarily think there's going to be one definitive one in the end there may be a set of set of ones for different purposes um, then following on from that policy the uh, implementation of that will be guided through recommendations on uh, which is in in tandem with the technical architecture work which is going on in the uh, architecture working group and that's what Raphael is going to talk, talk about later and then this PID policy will uh, as we heard this morning on the discussion around uh, governance um, this is going to be taken into future um, EOSCA governance processes through the rules of participation, which refers to the EOSCA policy and, and the future governance processes uh, to be defined. So our approach, well, I won't go into a lot of details of the approach, but I will mention some of the principles we were using, we, we, uh, we applied. Uh, what we wanted to do is design a, uh, well, to be able to enable a sustainable trusted PID infrastructure, which is suitable for long-term sustainability with the new Open Open Science Cloud, which accommodates a range of use cases and not to try to put up barriers to uh, people uh, using PIDs in different ways. Uh, we recognize that there is a, a range of PID practices and, uh, and suppliers already in existence and that those uh, PID infrastructures um, must have and do have a, a global scope. So they have to um, have, this is not just a European thing, this is, this is a, throughout the, the whole world, they have to be just identifiers. And as I mentioned before, that this should be largely aimed at, well, should be aimed at to support the FAIR principles and, um, and um, an, imp a, an essential component of the infrastructure that, we've, that we need to provide to support FAIR research. So we don't, so all that taken into account, we, we, we're trying to be balanced without a preferred approach or technology or provider, uh, but rather a set of, of requirements um, and uh, well, definitions and requirements that we would uh, expect people to adhere to when they're providing and using PIDs. And uh, to have a number of services that we can, that we can adopt in the uh, EOSC at a suitable level of maturity, but also encourage innovation and new services, new usages of PIDs, new 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 ways that PIDs are are provided. So that is pretty well all I wanted to say. Just a little bit on our progress and next steps. Uh, we uh, released a first draft of community comment back in December. Um, that has been quite extensively commented on, and then we've. Uh, gone through a, a revision period over the last two months or so 
uh, just released over the last week. Um, a new version, publicly available for comment for a second draft, um, and which is now available. Um, we'd love people to comment on this. Um, there are, uh, it's released onto the PID forum, which is where the link um, which Sarah's put up is on, so you can comment on the PID forum. Uh, we've got meetings like today, or you can just contact us or uh, through the your secretariat site, or you know, there's several different ways of, of, of contacting us. So please do, uh, if you haven't commented on it already, uh, take a look at it and um, um, do comment. In this second version, we tried to clarify some of the points. Uh, we tried to um, uh, add some extra stuff around what we've done. We've tried to add some extra stuff around um, some of the governance issues, some of the um, uh, and some of the issues around things like PID, the, the roles of PID kernel, PID kernels. Um, and so that's going on, still going on. We expect that to be finished by um, the end of the summer. We expect to get a final version out of this um, in the early autumn and certainly uh, ready by the um, the EOS symposium. And as I mentioned, there's a second strand of work uh, started up in the e architecture working group looking at recommendations around architecture and implementation. Uh, and that's been started by um, a team led by Ulrich Schwadman, Martin Fenner, Raphael's involved, I'm involved, and various others involved in that as well. Um, so I'll leave you with the with the, the link to the uh, the new version and um, then if there are no questions I'll well any questions now or, or should we just hand over to Raphael? If there are any clari clarification question uh, maybe now it's really specific to the policy otherwise we will move to Raphael. Please raise your hand if you or send message in the in the chat. Meanwhile, Rafael has taken control. And that was the interval window that was available for clarification question. And now we can move to Rafael's presentation. And of course, there will be a Q&A session at the end anyway. So Rafael, your turn. Thanks, Jean-Francois. Do people hear me and can see the screen? Yes. Okay, great, thank you. And thanks, Brian, for setting the scene. So as Brian already outlined, uh, another line of activities in the context of this uh, um, EOSC architecture working group in the context of PIDs is specifically uh, working out a proposal for an architecture, uh, um, of course, not completely out of the blue, but based on what we have, as we will see in a moment. But before I dive into that, um, uh, let me show you who are the people involved. And this, I think Brian mostly also already mentioned, uh, Ulrich Schwartmann from uh, GWDG, uh, not actually being a member of the EOSC Architecture Working Group, but an invited expert, uh, as he has a lot of experience, decades of experience, in fact, uh, uh, with PID systems. And other people you see here, some are actually currently in the room. And um, somehow I have a problem removing my slides. But anyway, uh, what I'm trying to get at today is to introduce you to the approach that we have taken, which can mostly be uh, uh, taken for the time being from a collaborative document where we pool all the things uh, uh, together that we work on. And I will provide a link to that uh, uh, document in a very moment. But I will also briefly mention what we do not consider here um, after the introduction that shouldn't come as a surprise to you. Then for the last, uh, uh, major part of this presentation, I'll give you a status report on where we are. And in closing, I would like to mention something slightly different. As many of you know, the working groups also contribute to the forthcoming strategic research and innovation agenda 
for the EOS in the Horizon Europe uh, program in the forthcoming one. And uh, in that context, the group is also contributing a section on PIDs, and this is what I will mention in the end. So the document that we have set out uh, 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 to produce um, focuses first and foremost on components and activities in a PIT architecture. And I mentioned specific also activities, as you will see in a moment, because this is the approach that we have adopted uh, uh, to get at the technicalities that we uh, uh, think we should be addressing here in this context. Uh, the intent is then to continue with concrete implementations uh, uh, based on various approaches that we have available to us today, some more mature, some more forthcoming, uh, uh, some more generic, uh, some more with a specific scope. Uh, but then this should be further illustrated by concrete examples, also linking, of course, to the uh, architecture decisions. Then highlighting a few of the maybe somewhat hidden facts with regard to uh, interoperability and complexity, as people not that much familiar with uh, PID systems may wonder uh, uh, where is the complexity hiding here, because from a more general point of view, uh, uh, the, the, the real scope or function that we are looking at here seems almost trivial, but mind you, um, the devil is in the details. Yet we know something that has, uh, for some aspects at least, certain similarities, and that is the DNS system, and so we thought it might be a good idea to compare to that, which may also uh, provide insights in terms of performance and scalability, which is something you want uh, uh, in a uh, uh, for a substantial endeavor such as EOSC and the scientific uh, activities at large. And then let's not forget that uh, in order to be trustworthy, uh, attention needs to be paid to security, reliability, resilience, and all of that. And I'll close with current gaps. So what is not in scope here, being an architecture group, probably no wonder, is policies, um, but also not actors, in the, at least not in the sense of um, uh, who is performing which actions or who should be uh, providing which service or which service component. Or um, uh, then uh, somewhat more specifically, uh, we are also not concerned with business or sustainability or um, uh, more boldly speaking, who pays. Um, that is in part covered by the policy, but not here in the architectural context. Same for operations, governance, rules of participation, policy enforcement and all of that. Or maybe only to the extent that we can envision that some architectural decisions or components may help in these, but without uh, 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 putting any of those topics here primarily in the focus. So here the link to the document that I've just mentioned a few times now. Uh, uh, I understand that those slides will be available to you uh, after this meeting. So essentially this is where you can watch us working. And um, uh, what I should probably point out right from the beginning, uh, many of us people involved here are experienced with the handle system. That is a, a technology and software stack that has been around for something on the order of 25 years at least by now. Um, of course, we understand that this is not the only approach, yet actually a couple of PID providers that you may be more familiar with, such as DataSite, who provides the digital object identifiers, the European PID Consortium, uh, EUDAT's B2Handle service, uh, uh, Crossref, they are all based on the uh, uh, handle system which is why we thought it is probably a good idea to start out with that and try to generalize from there. And so uh, uh, to now dive more uh, concretely into, into the details, uh, one approach that we have taken is to um, uh, 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 summarize and illustrate um, uh, the matter at hand through uh, UML diagrams and uh, sometimes UML activity diagrams. And uh, um, they, they look similar to this. So this is a very simple example, uh, uh, mostly meant as an introduction. 
Some of you, I'm sure, are uh, uh, familiar with that kind of notation. So uh, uh, sometimes it actually um, matters to pay attention to detail. So as I illustrate in this example here, um, um, how the arrows that you see connecting those two boxes here actually start with a diamond, a filled diamond, or no diamond at all, may actually already tell you something. So in the example here, whether you need credentials, a contract, or whether it's open access and the like. And really from a, a, a bird's eye view, um, um, if there is such a thing as a PID system, a consumer actually um, uh, uh, interacts with that. And here are uh, uh, six of the most basic interactions. Um, getting something like an account in the system or a namespace or in the parlance of the handle system that would be a prefix, which is the term denoted here that you see. And that can then be used in order to uh, 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 register PIDs. Uh, um, the system can then be queried, PIDs can be resolved, um, uh, and so on and so forth. This is how this is meant to be read. If you then go uh, 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 a little bit further and start uh, looking, for instance, at the consumer in a slightly more detailed fashion, then uh, one not uncommon use case is that uh, a user actually does not directly interact with the PID system, but rather uh, with a repository where she or he publishes data uh, or um, um, accesses data that uh, have been found in response to a query, for instance. And it is for a large part, at least, the repository that interact with, interacts with this global PID architecture. And this is how uh, uh, this could then be denoted uh, 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 using the approach that I, uh, uh, I just started to explain. And you see uh, the different kinds of actions also being denoted here. And um, uh, you can then go further and, for instance, pay a bit more attention to uh, uh, the inner workings of uh, what's here referred to as global PID registration and resolution system. It is understood from the onset that this is essentially a, a, a federation-based approach. So there can be any number of providers actually contributing to this. We denote those here as local PID providers. And the local PID provider together with the global registration and resolution system then provides a PID service with which the consumer uh, mostly interacts. Um, well, and what kind of interaction goes where uh, is also uh, what you can take from these kinds of diagrams. If you now put these things together, it already looks slightly more complex, but this is essentially what I've just shown. Now uh, the consumer and the provider uh, uh, show a bit more detail, but the story doesn't stop there. Um, you can also elaborate further on the uh, 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 resolution and uh, looking at existing PhD systems. This is actually what we already have in place uh, for some PID systems at least for performance, robustness, resilience, uh, 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 and all that. Um, the, um, uh, as I said, the system is from the ground up uh, uh, designed as a federated system. But not only that, there is also a, a certain hierarchy of authorities, or there could be at least, and uh, uh, that allows then for uh, um, um, more manageable uh, delegation of control, for instance, who is allowed to do what where. Uh, uh, this allows for mirroring, uh, um, uh, failovers in the resolution, and those kinds of things. I don't even want you to look in, uh, uh, in close detail at all those different errors. That's why I'm trying to explain why you want to turn uh, 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 to such an architecture eventually. And so far, I've not really explained something new as I've been referring to systems that we have already up and, uh, and running uh, uh, some since years ago. This now is something slightly more different, uh, uh, what I call adding types and profiles. In fact, what we are picking up here is uh, a recommendation, or should I rather say a bunch of recommendations that uh, uh, grew out of the Research Data Alliance over the past couple of years. 
Um, uh, some of you may even be aware of the fact that within the context of the Research Data Alliance, um, from the onset, essentially, uh, there was a certain group of people interested in um, uh, 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 PID systems and how to develop and take them further. And uh, 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 two notions specifically were brought on the agenda uh, right at the onset of the Research Data Alliance. One being the topic of data typing and uh, uh, concepts such as the data type registry and more powerful machine readable data types uh, grew out of there and uh, uh, that has been recommended by the RDA for future adoption and it has actually also been picked up in the meantime by the uh, European Commission as this is an uh, 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 endorsed uh, 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 ICT specification um, that also the Commission now actually accepts in certain uh, uh, administrative and financial contracts, uh, procurement processes and the like. And the other term mentioned here are then profiles. And with profiles, we mean that uh, uh, it should be possible to add certain uh, 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 a set of metadata to PIDs. So um, um, not just what people usually assume to be uh, uh, scope of a PID system, you have something globally unique that resolves to some place else, and if that place changes, you, um, uh, uh, you adapt the registration and so you don't lose the reference. That's of course the first and foremost uh, 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 feature and functionality that people expect from a PID system, and rightly so, but it doesn't stop there. And um, uh, what I'm getting at here now is the uh, possibility and in fact, the handle uh, system provides that capability from a technical point of view already today, that um, you, uh, uh, you are able to associate certain uh, uh, metadata, in fact, any metadata, or whatever you can cast into proper key value terms. And if the value is a reference to someplace else, then that can be arbitrarily complex in principle. But uh, 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 the idea being that uh, uh, in addition for a PID system to be able to resolve to an object in question, it should also be possible uh, to obtain a certain set of information about that object without in fact actually accessing the object itself. You may still decide later that you want it anyway, but on the other hand, this additional information could also help you decide, oh no, this is not what I'm interested in. And the kind of information that you may add to, uh, to a profile uh, uh, could be, well, simple technical properties such as size or a checksum that you may want to use in order to check for consistency, whether you've really gotten what you expected to get. But it could also be information about um, access rights, for instance, um, uh, or rights holder, um, uh, whether it's uh, something open, uh, uh, if the referred to object is open access, or uh, if it's available under a certain license, um, or you may have information there uh, uh, regarding versioning, whether uh, what you are about to get at if you were to resolve that PID, is that a current version of something, or is there a predecessor or a successor? Um, People have been thinking in, in different directions and uh, uh, there have been quite a number of contributions and proposals, what exactly to put there and how, uh, so what kind of metadata. And it is um, uh, uh, generally accepted, at least in the PID community, that this would be a, a, a useful feature to adopt and use and as I've tried to outline this can be used in many ways and in which ways is still to be elaborated upon. So if we then put all these things together, um, uh, uh, I then again you, uh, uh, I, I called it an almost complete view because I'm, I'm sure we are not there at the end yet. Um, uh, uh, there are further questions that we are considering to what extent we might want to incorporate those here. And uh, uh, this is what I summarized here now again in text form, uh, namely, um, should, we, should we go through further iterations to uh, make the federation aspects more explicit? 
And uh, uh, this is driven by the, uh, the observation or the simple fact that admittedly uh, a lot of what we produced so far is based on our experience with handle-based systems. But of course we are aware, as I've already mentioned in the beginning, that there are other technologies in place to um, uh, establish similar kinds of functionality. And if we, uh, uh, if we ask ourselves how it should become possible uh, uh, to federate across technology stacks, then we need to pay more attention to interfaces and protocols and to what extent we then uh, uh, agree to cover that within this uh, specific architecture document here. Uh, we haven't really answered yet. That's one of the current discussions going on. Uh, the other thing where I've just tried to explain uh, uh, by way of example almost uh, the uh, uh, two main functionalities of a PID system as we understand it, namely in addition to resolution, also the option to retrieve associated data, metadata, profile or kernel information. It's referred to in, by different terms in different contexts and actually coining a term to be used in the context of EOS may be also something where we make a proposal. Um, but then uh, uh, another open question that we are currently considering and asking ourselves to what extent this uh, should be incorporated in architectural discussions results from the fact that um, uh, when a, a PID registration or its associated metadata, so at the PID record level, uh, needs to change, because something has changed, it's not the current version any longer, or there's something else related, or it's been moved to a different place, then uh, more often than not, the person or authority that would be uh, aware and responsible uh, uh, for that change or responsible for um, uh, reflecting that change in the system may not have the immediate rights to do so, because uh, after all, we want a PID system to be uh, 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 stable and trustworthy and correct and reliable. Uh, so we can't allow just anyone to change anything here. And so uh, uh, most likely there should be a process through which uh, uh, updates, changes, additions to already existing PID records uh, uh, could be managed. And what impact that has on the architecture is one of the questions that we are uh, uh, currently also addressing, as I said. And um, uh, this essentially covers uh, uh, the two bullet points here, the delegation and the request. And then from the outline of the document that I've just uh, uh, briefly mentioned in the beginning, by far not all sections have been fully elaborated. Uh, uh, some have only sketches of the content, just uh, some are just bullet points. So of course there is a lot of uh, uh, work left to do. And on the one hand, that is probably not too surprising given that this group was actually uh, uh, put in place and started its activities only three months ago. So while the architecture working group has been around for more than a year or almost a year and a half formally and uh, more than a, a, yeah, a year effectively, um, we first uh, 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 contributed to the uh, generation of the PID policy document, which has reached a certain level of maturity by now. And so it's been only more recently that we've shifted focus uh, within the group now uh, to work on this architectural document. So this is why we don't even have something, uh, uh, a draft ready to the extent that we would be able to circulate that and solicit feedback that way. But on the other hand, we thought it's actually a good idea to reach out here uh, and point you to our working document because I think now is actually a good time uh, as it should already become apparent uh, uh, what we are thinking, where we are coming from, where we are heading, and most likely uh, uh, we might be missing something or maybe if you've gotten certain things wrong. And of course we would appreciate uh, 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 feedback along those lines in order to get us straight. But maybe even more importantly, what I want to say here is that um, uh, at least some of you might actually be uh, uh, contacted by us in the not too far distant future 
as some of the sections, specifically those on the concrete implementations and on the concrete examples, we, we may not even be able to properly write ourselves. So we would need then uh, uh, help by uh, uh, people who have the respective expertise. And uh, uh, I just wanted to give a heads up here so um, uh, that to prime you, uh, should you be in, in scope for these kinds of questions. And with that, I now switch gears again a little bit as already announced in the introduction. Uh, what we already also uh, uh, were able to do is uh, based on the current state of affairs, both within the policy as well as the architecture work, to provide input to the forthcoming uh, uh, strategic research and innovation agenda for EOS. And uh, uh, summarize this um, on essentially two slides, one being this one here now. Uh, uh, the first part where it's more on stats, um, uh, I think that is explaining what we have today. But the gaps are probably more interesting that we have identified and uh, uh, some of the things mentioned here uh, probably don't as a surprise to many of you. So uh, in essence, people agree that uh, in order to know what we are talking about, we need identifiers, quote unquote, for everything. So not just publications or data sets or data collections, but all for um, uh, 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 well, the other types of resources or entities uh, of the scientific process, being that uh, people or organizations, uh, uh, funding agencies, projects on the one hand, or um, uh, 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 software, workflows, um, uh, other artifacts of the scientific process on the other hand, uh, uh, services for instance. So for all of those, um, uh, it would be advantageous to have PIDs, but then you may be also able to see already from, uh, uh, from this um, uh, enumeration that the moment we start to look at accompanying metadata, so additional information to go with the PID itself, that may actually uh, um, uh, require different kinds of additional information as different uh, entities of different nature are simply described in different ways. How to properly do that is actually a challenging task and for most application domains not really established yet. Then uh, 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 another, at, at the moment, um, PID systems, specifically when we are then also uh, uh, considering the PID records, are only to a very limited extent machine actionable uh, 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 by the time. Specifically not when we consider machine actionability uh, beyond the PID system itself, namely by the referred to objects. That's then where the notions of data types and the like come into play. Another issue where we are currently at, uh, uh, well, um, uh, have nothing available to us is um, if we, um, uh, if, if we just consider the fact that uh, uh, PID systems may be based on uh, uh, different technologies organized by different organizations and authorities, uh, so far there is no um, overarching meta result, we call it here. So a service where you can uh, uh, turn to with any uh, uh, PID whatsoever uh, and um, you will get what you expect. I mean, uh, a resolution or uh, uh, to the object itself or to the additional data. Um, again, back to the handle system. Technically, for the handle system, that would be straightforward uh, as this ha the handle system supports the design. Even there, mostly based on policy decisions, not all PID service providers that use the handle system actually support resolving. PIDs issued by another organization. It's just a matter of fact today. And something like that, uh, 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 even more generalized, we consider a gap. Next thing so may sound something more specific, namely the PID graph, but that would be an example of uh, uh, what I mentioned earlier, potential use case for the uh, uh, PID records. 
namely uh, uh, to hold information about relationships of the referred to object to other objects. And uh, 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 that then could build the basis for integration of PIDs into a more general fair data management system as we envision it for EOS. Uh, yet another angle that may need attention and where uh, uh, understanding so far is limited at best is uh, how to deal with sensitive data. And again, there the problem is mostly on the side where we're talking about additional information in the metadata record. If the data itself is sensitive and needs protection, then that typically also applies at least to a certain subset of the associated metadata. That then means you need uh, an, uh, uh, access control uh, both for viewing and of course also for adding or changing that information quality of services, new PID technologies, uh, you can probably imagine what these may mean. And for the uh, uh, last slide here, um, in some ways this is um, uh, uh, redundant to the previous slide. It's a subset of those terms, but with a, um, uh, a bit more verbose phrasing. Uh, I just pasted literally the current uh, uh, state of the priorities section from the uh, three year contribution. Uh, uh, this is on this end, the, our current state of discussion. So highest priority would be PIDs for instruments, services, organizations, and software. Second priority, a meta resolver. Third priority, a uh, schema, so uh, uh, essentially a specification or a model for the PID records or kernel information, as some say, type definitions, protocols for exchanging information between PID systems, and tools to support the, uh, uh, the certification of PID infrastructure. With that, uh, uh, I would like to uh, uh, open the floor for discussion. As I, um, um, I think I've, I hope I've now provided uh, a fair account of the status of where we are with our discussions and considerations. And you see, this is something, well, um, right from the engine room, uh, uh, we are by no means uh, uh, finished yet. But as I said, this is probably also why now I think it is a good and rewarding time uh, to open this up and uh, uh, solicit feedback. And I'm happy to receive your contributions. Thanks. So for any question, please uh, raise your hand and uh, you will be unmuted. And so we'll, you, you will speak. Thank you. And I'm not sure I should still share my screen or uh, what what would people prefer? Somehow I just try to get in a, a, a glimpse on the chat or see who is raising hand, but I, I fail to see uh, the presentation view of my slide and the controls from the Zoom meeting. So uh, I, I would appreciate if somebody uh, could moderate this and... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'd, um, so this is Sarah. So I, I can read a few questions out of the chat. So, so Oya's um, raised one about how easy it would be to substitute a PID system. Are there any measures to mitigate a lock-in situation? Well, as I've been trying to explain, um, uh, uh, one, uh, uh, one key uh, uh, design decision is to uh, have this uh, based on a, a, a federated approach which is to say that uh, uh, there won't be uh, any single or, or, or central uh, uh, PID service. So um, um, you can add, quote unquote, arbitrary, that's at least the goal, uh, uh, PID uh, uh, service providers. And that I consider an important prerequisite in order to be able 
to uh, uh, substitute uh, uh, potentially a PID service providers should, uh, should one run out of business, uh, uh, so to be taken over by others. The other means that we already have in place today in many situations is uh, uh, to mirror the information between uh, uh, PID service providers. So, um, uh, so that if, if one goes out of business or goes just down for whatever reason, uh, it is taken over by others. So uh, I would say uh, uh, in principle, we, uh, we are thinking that this is accommodated. In detail, there is probably a lot more to be considered rather than the, uh, just the uh, technical prerequisites, as uh, that, of course, also involves uh, uh, a number of substantial questions uh, with respect to um, uh, authority and control, which need to be uh, made more on the uh, governance and policy level rather than the architectural level. Mm -hmm. But if, if I understood Oya's question correctly, then I would say caring for such a situation or providing uh, uh, the technical means at the uh, design level of the system, uh, yes, this is in scope and we think this is accommodated for. Excellent. Thank you. Can I, can I add to that? Yeah, yes, yeah, sure. go ahead, Brian. There's a preference in the um, policy to say that we would expect community standards and governance. So there'd be an open, a certain degree of openness in the standards under which a um, PID uh, scheme would work. So it, it would be available to public view what the standards that the system's following. So that should give a level of um, assurance that, that um, you, can't, you, you can move to a different system which is compatible. Okay. Excellent. Uh, sorry, uh, we have uh, some people have raised their, their hand. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that. So Milan and Yuri are the two I see raised. I think Milan can speak. I have one question. Yes, and uh, uh, you have, uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, bits for the same entity, for example, for people, for organization, for project. Who will work on alignment of these bits? Because I think it's in, the most important is that we have some unique uh, alignment scheme. For example, Milan Oystershek in ORCID, Milan Oystershek in VIF, uh, or, or researcher ID. I have different bits for, the, for me, for example, for a, a person. Yeah, Do you I think I perfectly understand. I think I perfectly understand where you are heading and also where you're coming from. And I absolutely agree with you. I mean, it's just a matter of fact that we have this fragmented landscape. I also, actually, I even don't know how many different identifiers I would have for myself and being in the context of a researcher, a person, uh, an infrastructure provider, and you name it. Um, I would consider this actually an important application domain for the uh, uh, PID graph that I briefly mentioned uh, uh, in the sense that uh, it should be possible uh, uh, to connect PID records and uh, so to, in order to establish relationships between them. And one such relationship could be something like same as or also known as. And uh, uh, then a, a meta resolver, uh, uh, I, I would envision to be able uh, uh, to return more than just uh, uh, one hit and saying uh, the identifier that you provided me with points here, uh, but this is also known as, or it's also the same as, a, B, C, D, E, whatever it then finds. So based on that information, assuming those relationships were established. Aligning those even further to the extent that uh, in some bright future, there may only be one identifier for a single individual entity and that's it. Uh, personally speaking, I don't think this is a state that we will ever uh, achieve as we are already starting out from a such a fragmented uh, landscape as you've been uh, uh, referring to. And actually, um, maybe that's not even wrong because uh, 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 some identifiers have uh, um, 
only a certain uh, 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 limited scope and at least from a functional perspective sometimes even limited lifetime even that this is somehow contradictory um, uh, but when we consider persons for instance they also have a finite lifetime and I have a passport number, I have an ID number, uh, I have um, a, a personal number at the Max Planck Society where I work for, and somehow we, we get that sort of aligned, but certainly we should be able to do better. That is not to say that uh, 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 we encourage here proliferation of PIDs, all the contrary, uh, but I think we should be able and prepared for uh, uh, dealing with the situation as we find it. And I would not be surprised if other people have a different view here, but that would be my stance. Another thing is scalability. For, uh, for example, if you have a lot of sensor data and uh, every this uh, data stream has uh, their own PIT, how you will resolve this scalability of PIT? Um, if I understand you correctly, then you are referring to the question of granularity. And uh, by that, at least in my understanding, uh, uh, I mean, what, what should the PID actually point to or be issued for? Uh, uh, should that be a, a, a macro entity, uh, something substantial, or could that be a minute detail of something? And um, from an architectural point of view, I'm not so sure that we should even make uh, 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 statements here. I would consider that rather a policy question, but of course it is a very relevant, relevant one. And the answer on the other hand is again related, uh, I would say at the performance of the system and that then in turn is uh, uh, again, depending on the architecture. So in that sense, yes, it is also uh, uh, nevertheless in scope. So, uh, Many of the experimental scientists uh, 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 today are collecting ever increasing amounts of data. And do you give a PID to each uh, observation, trace, image from your microscope, you name it or not? And if, if you were to do so, if you start out uh, at a very fine granular level, uh, we would easily be overwhelmed by, uh, uh, by PIDs and that could be actually quite a challenge uh, uh, for a global PID system. Probably almost unfeasible for the foreseeable future at least. Uh, the approach that people then typically take uh, uh, in addressing this is, or uh, a recommendation often also, start assigning identifiers early in your system, in your observation system, simulation software, uh, whatever it is that you are dealing with, but maybe uh, 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 produce those identifiers first and foremost locally and um, uh, uh, organize your data then in the form of certain collections and maybe only to those collections then in the end uh, 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 provide a PID. But there are also hybrid approaches I would even be aware of. Um, uh, in a concrete example that I'm uh, uh, just thinking of, uh, the novel materials discovery uh, um, uh, repository, uh, what we have uh, adopted there is that we issue a handle-based PID that we mint ourselves uh, for each and every data set. But as I said, data sets can be uh, organized in collections. And those collections then are often uh, uh, done for a specific purpose. For instance, they may contain all data that went into a certain publication or were underlying the analysis uh, and the results then published in a certain publication. And for those collections, then uh, 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 people can request to get a DOI. Um, um, uh, DOI is a bit more effort because the policy there is that you are required to, uh, to provide a certain minimal set of metadata, which you may not be willing or able to provide for, or, and may even not make sense for, for each and every bit that you uh, uh, might want to be able to refer to. Uh, but those would then be individual uh, uh, decisions at the level of a project or for a community and uh, uh, for the uh, um, uh, PID system as such, as we are considering it here, I think as long as we can support those different approaches and those different policies, I think we are fine. 
But um, uh, I agree with you, um, uh, if you take it to the extreme, we will certainly hit limits. But that's also why I mentioned towards the end that um, uh, also scalability and performance are certainly issues because uh, the limit how far you can stretch that depends on this. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. So, so Yuri, if we can come to your question and then we'll see if we get a chance. There's a few more in chat, but we're running out of time now. So, so Yuri, if you could ask your question. Uh, I mostly not ask my question, simply comment that uh, okay. uh, the actually uh, PID is very important, uh, would be service. But uh, first of all, we have example, what I mentioned also in Budapest. Uh, that uh, we have a nice example of global identification of any object that exists in the infrastructure is a, a cloud, modern cloud systems. You can understand that uh, scale of cloud systems is equal to uh, maybe in the future scale of research infrastructure, but the only uh, problem with them is uh, that uh, they are entirely insi inside. So cloud providers doesn't solve the problem across border, across cloud referencing. And indeed the referencing uh, federated infrastructure for PID is very reasonable. But we need to also to understand that many infrastructure, research infrastructure will have own internal PID system for objects and what will be exposed outside. Uh, this is what uh, also some said. So, so architecture should include a so-called uh, hybrid infrastructure, intra-organization, and between organization, inter-organization. Uh, second is that actually uh, comparing to uh, DNS may be slightly misleading because DNS is a low-level protocol and what we expect services from a PID infrastructure is actually like service level protocol. So where we can use rather web services and API architecture than DNS low level protocols. And if we uh, agree on this kind of, or accept this kind of uh, basics or a uh, key issues, we may faster forward this developing of PID architecture and infrastructure. Well, thanks, Yuri, for your comments. And if, my, if I may comment on your comment, um, I, I think I actually agree. And I think um, we've seen already in the discussion uh, 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 two examples for the first point that you were making, uh, uh, the, this interplay between uh, uh, internal organization and what you expose to the external world. And yes, of course, I agree that um, uh, in cloud-based systems, uh, providers have to deal with the uh, um, uh, identification process all the time, and it's, it's far from trivial. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, people manage to do so. Um, it gives a hint on scalability, you are right. And uh, of course, you can also run a PID system in the cloud and have it scale there, whatever you can afford. And uh, uh, that, things should be able to work um, uh, across organizations. Uh, um, uh, yes, I absolutely agree. I think I was even making that as an example or motivation for uh, uh, what I recall the uh, um, uh, extension of this federated uh, approach and uh, uh, conse potential consequences being that uh, uh, you, you should have a well-established way how those different PID systems that uh, operate under different governance can actually inform each other or technically speaking become interoperable nevertheless. And, and, it, uh, uh, and your, uh, your final remark uh, with respect to the DNS system, I meant this to be an example for uh, uh, the kind of functionality that you nowadays take for granted. You open up a browser, you type in a URL, not an IP number, uh, uh, but uh, uh, something like eosc uh, uh, minus secretariat.eosc.eu or something, and it goes somewhere. And you, as a user, you don't need to care how this is actually resolved, how the respective node in the network is found, how the application on that delivers the web presence, and all these kinds of things. The user shouldn't care. Absolutely agree. And, and this is the level 
uh, uh, that um, uh, we think we should be able to achieve for BIDs as well. You have a PID from somewhere, you want to get at this, you don't need to know and you don't need to care who has issued this PID. There is a maybe web service or some kind of service where you can uh, uh, approach that PID that you have as input and you get what you expect. This is, uh, uh, this is the kind of uh, uh, functionality uh, uh, I was trying to allude to uh, and why I used the, uh, the DNS ex as example for comparison. I did not mean to imply that a PID system should work under the hood and at, at the same level and in the same way as a DID, uh, uh, DNS system. Sorry if that got misunderstood. Excellent. Thanks very much. Um, so I see some of the questions have been addressed in the chat as well. Brian and others have, have commented. Um, does anyone have final questions or reflections? Um, Jean-Francois or Raphael or Brian, if things you'd like to comment on before we close? Uh, uh, Sarah, there is one more question left on sensitive data in the chat. Uh, uh, I, I think that might be coming out of another se session. Raymond, are you in this session? I have a feeling the chat is actually merged because I think this might come out of the MVE one, but or possibly it's for here. Sarah, I'm in this session, yes. Oh, you are in this session. Okay, sorry yeah, for ignoring yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to try to understand what 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 are these categories of sensitive data. Um, so Raphael, sorry, uh, Raphael, yeah, go ahead. Sensitive data. What is this sensitive data about? Um, what we mean by sensitive data in this context here could be anything that requires um, uh, uh, protection and for that reason access control, whether it's personalized data, clinical data, uh, social science data. Um, uh, a lot of research is actually performed on data that for one reason or another can't be made open. Um, Yet you want to be able uh, 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 to uh, assign PIDs to such data. Now, sometimes this is already considered problematic if um, uh, uh, that uh, would imply that you make certain information, you, you make information available that there is something there, even if you say this is access controlled or if you add uh, uh, further information like this is from a certain experiment, um, uh, which itself might already be uh, 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 sensitive data that needs to be protected. So what we mean here uh, uh, when we say uh, in order to support sensitive data in a PID system, uh, the system itself should provide means by which data it deals with the PID itself, the resolution target, um, the uh, uh, associated metadata in the PID record or a subset thereof um, uh, uh, can be protected themselves as well in order to not uh, 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 break things open that shouldn't be broken. So whatever then falls into that domain and whatever the level of protection uh, 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 is needed, um, uh, that should be, it should not be a non-supported use case. Let's put it the other way around. And what that then implies in principle and how that could be accomplished, what architectural constraints follow from there uh, uh, in order to support these kinds of functionalities we haven't really worked out in detail, I have to admit. There are certain ideas, at least at the level of protecting uh, individual properties or attributes within the PID record, but that's essentially as far as we've gotten up to now. But um, uh, I don't know whether that now answered your question. Partially, yes, but, but because originally what I was wondering was that the sensitive data is this, could this be data that we think that has difficulties in, in its access. Because for example, you will find uh, some institutions, they want their data to only be accessed when you have paid for it. Yet we have been discussing open access, free access, all that kind of things. But um, when you brought in this sensitive category, I was wondering what exactly is this um, uh, data type? And um, 
here in Africa, most of the data to be accessed, unfortunately, most of the government agencies might want the data to be paid for. So that's why I wanted to put it to that level mm -hmm. for it to be sensitive. Thank you. Uh, I think we're out of time. So Sarah, back to you for conclusion, if you want to. Or... Uh, yeah, well, just a thanks um, to all of you for participating and particularly to Raphael and, and Brian for, for presenting and also uh, in the spirit of openness, I think it's fantastic for people to be able to see the working documents as, as things are happening there. So um, do um, tune in, see what's happening and uh, thanks for your feedback here.